This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Heater. We welcome you, and we've got a studio audience here with us, and we're hungry. I know you're hungry for the Word. So we invite you to become a student, because as you become a student, you can better be a doer, a doer of the Word. So get hold of your Bible, get a notepad, get pen, paper, and uh, follow along with us. Make notes, and believe for God to speak to you, maybe even things I don't even say. Because the Spirit of God can speak things to you while I'm preaching the Word. He'll address it and cater it exactly to your need today. And I tell you, we're believing God for answers for you. Uh, every answer for every need that you face. Because victory belongs to us. And so, um, God has been having us to teach on the subject of the mind. And the reason it's so important is we all got one. I mean, everybody has to become skillful at dealing with their thought life. And uh, so he began dealing with me about teaching along that line. And in previous episodes, we started on that. And we're just going to continue on today and in the upcoming episodes. Um, because everything that belongs to us in Christ, I mean all the blessings of God. You know, what does Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 say? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. He has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My favorite translation says that God has already blessed us with everything that heaven itself enjoys. My goodness, that's, that's what God authored for us. Yeah. What heaven's enjoying in heaven, we enjoy on earth. Amen. 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 So all the blessings of God that belong to us, health, healing, uh, prosperity, peace, joy, victory, it all belongs to us. But don't leave out something that is so vital that belongs to us, and that is a sound mind. I mean, that's part of our inheritance in Christ. So I want you to turn with me, if you would, to 2 Timothy and chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and we're going to start reading in verse 7. We have to, the Word helps us to think right. Because when we think right, we'll believe right. When we believe right, we'll speak right. And when we speak right, we'll do right. And then we'll receive right. Many times people are thinking, why isn't God giving me what I need when he's waiting for our thinking to come in line with what we need to receive from him? And so people are always, many times uh, they, they go God's direction of waiting on Him, but He's waiting on us to come into line with His system of thinking. And I'm so grateful for His Word because His Word is His system of thinking. It shows us the thoughts of God. It is the thoughts of God. And it shows us how to think. The more we think in line with Him, the more we cooperate with Him. The less we think like Him, the less we can receive of what He's made ours. We need to come into His way of thinking. And that's what the renewed mind does. It lays down our own human, natural, carnal way of thinking to take on His higher way of thinking. And so as we think right, then we can flow and cooperate with Him in such a way that we can easily and freely receive all that He's already made ours. Amen. Amen. And so we want to see something here that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the King James translation says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Notice this, God is not dealing with any of His children on the basis of fear. Right. 
If it brings fear into your life, God's not promoting that. God is not dealing with you and speaking to you. You know, sometimes people will have a fearful thought and they'll think, oh, maybe that's God speaking to me. No, he's not speaking to you on the basis of fear. God's not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is not his servant. And uh, he doesn't use the spirit of fear. Uh, Notice fear is a spirit. It's not simply a feeling. It's not simply an emotion. Uh, Now, don't misunderstand me. Fear can produce a feeling. Fear will enhance an emotion. But a fear is a spirit. And in today's society, listen, we have so many people, and it's a tragic situation, that are self-medicated just to function. I mean, they're, ta- they're going to the doctors, right? They're going and, and they're getting all kinds of prescriptions and help just to handle and cope with daily life. We're not called to cope with daily life. We're called to, to walk in victory. We don't just cope with, with fear and keep it under. We run it out. <laughs> Amen. And God has not planned that we just cope through medical things. Now listen, I'm not against people getting help that they need. It's not that, but I'm just saying what God authored for us is not a mind that needs to be medicated. He offers us his word that will bring us into the sound mind. And so as we grow in the word and we become skillful with applying the word regarding our thought life, then we can walk free from the things that used to trouble us in the thought life. We can live a trouble with a trouble-free mind. Now, listen, don't don't misunderstand me. As Christians, uh, thoughts are going to come. Because you're a Christian doesn't mean that the devil's going to leave you alone in the thought life. That's Satan's arena. He's going to launch all kinds of attacks in the thought life. But the thing is, the renewed mind knows how to respond to wrong thoughts. It knows how to answer wrong thoughts and forbid wrong thoughts from gaining entrance into our thought lives. So a sound mind doesn't mean tests don't come. A sound mind means we know what to say to a test. We know how to handle wrong thoughts that come. And so it says again in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. But then it goes on to tell us what he has given us, the spirit of power, yes. of love, and a sound mind. Yes. Now listen, you know, you have to walk, you have to use your faith to walk in love. <laughs> I mean, because when you feel like uh, responding in a way that isn't love by faith, you say, no, nope, the love of God's in me and I'm going to let that dominate me. So I'm going to respond based on love that's in me. The power of God, it's available to you. It belongs to you. It's a flow that is part of the Christian's weaponry. It's a part of our blessing is the power of God, but we access it by faith. Well, even so, you walk with a sound mind by faith. You have to exercise your faith to have a sound mind. Why is that? Because the enemy brings all kinds of thoughts to try to draw you out of soundness. So it says here in Timothy, Paul was writing to Timothy and he said, God's not given us a spirit of fear. So what is, we know this, that Paul was helping Timothy. Timothy, who is this precious man of God who traveled and was an assist to Paul, he even had to deal with the spirit of fear. And, and Paul is teaching him, God's not behind that. It's a spirit of fear. So people are self-medicating to, to deal with depression, oppression, panic attacks, anxiety, all these kinds of things. And they're very real because they come from the enemy who walks about seeking to devour. But the thing is, is that uh, although worry, doubt, fear, anxiety, panic that people medicate for, all of that comes from the spirit of fear. So learn that when those things try to come, Learn to deal with them. Use your faith. Use the word of God. Amen. Amen. Don't just accept, just because it comes to your mind doesn't mean it came from your mind. Now that's a big key for people to understand because so much of the time they think because a fearful thought comes that it came from their mind. I want you to know God's given you a sound mind. Fear didn't come from a sound mind. 
thoughts of fear did not come from a Semite. It came from an outside source, which is the enemy. And so fear comes to the mind. It didn't come from your mind. Unless you accept that thought and make it part of your thought life, then the spirit of fear doesn't even have to suggest it because your own thought life took it and keeps repeating it. So we have to become skillful. So just know this. You say, Pastor Nancy, you know, I'm on a medication to try to deal with my mind. Listen, uh, just today, just start using your faith. You say, well, then should I throw out my medication? You do what God tells you to do. But I'm saying you don't have to throw out your medication to start using your faith. Amen. 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 It's not withholding medication or or, or help that pleases God. It's faith that pleases God. You know, you can withhold medication and not use your faith and not be pleasing to God. Or if someone has been on medication and they want to come off medication, well, start using your faith first. Let your faith get fed. Let your faith grow. And I guarantee you the Spirit of God will help you. He'll direct you on what to do regarding medication or no medication. It's not withholding or using medication that offends God or pleases God. It's faith that pleases God. Amen. So just the first step, just start feeding your faith and use your faith. Instead of yielding to fear, instead of yielding to panic, instead of yielding to anxiety, talk to it. Yes. And you say, well, Pastor Nancy, it doesn't seem like anything changes. It doesn't matter. You keep talking to it. That's right. You know, I was listening to, um, I was listening to a minister talk about, and it was real interesting to me because it showed another side of ministry. Um, they talked about how they were teaching um, healing classes at a certain location. And they said, every time that we would start teaching those people who needed healing about their authority in Christ, we'd teach them to start answering symptoms, answer pain, answer wrong thoughts. We would start teaching them to exercise their authority. They said, all of a sudden, everybody's symptoms would start heightening. It would increase. And people would seemingly get worse. Well, what is that? The devil's trying to dupe them and trying to make them think their authority doesn't work for them. But I tell you what, you just keep using your authority. Now, you know about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What was it? I mean, the King, king Nebuchadnezzar said he gathered together all the leaders and all, all the nation that day and said that, you know, he had set up this false image of himself and he was going to have everyone to bow and worship that. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had a covenant with God, they were leaders in this nation. They were held there. You know, they were carried there as slaves and they were trained in educated and they became leaders in the nation. But they said, we're not bowing. And so the king said, if you don't, you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And they said, we're still not bowing. Well, what did the king do? He said, turn up the fire. Notice when they stood their ground, the fire didn't go down. It went up. (laughs) What does that mean? Symptoms, circumstances heightened. Why? Because the devil's trying to frighten them off of their stance of authority. But what did they do? It didn't matter to them that the symptoms got worse. The fire got hotter. The thoughts got more intense. They just were unswayed. That's what wrong thinking uh, comes to do, to sway you from right thinking. That's why troubling thoughts come. That's why thoughts of fear come. That's why thoughts of doubt, thoughts of worry come. They're trying to sway you off of right thinking. And so the devil will use circumstances around you, things you can feel, things you can see, things you can touch, to try to adjust the way you think. So what did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do? They said, well, we're still not bowing. (laughs) I mean, you turned up the furnace, good for you, but it doesn't change us. Don't let the circumstances change you. Don't let the circumstances change what you believe. Listen, you believed you were healed before symptoms came. Believe you're healed after symptoms come. That's all it means. You believed you had that peace belonged to you before worried mm-hmm. thoughts came. Believe peace is still yours when worried thoughts come. Amen. Just don't change. Yes. Don't come off. Don't be swayed. 
don't be swayed off of the word. Don't be swayed off what God said. And that's what happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to be swayed. And you know what? They went into a furnace that was seven times hotter than it had ever been heated before. And what did that show? It showed this, no matter how hot it is, God is greater than how hot it is. <laughs> the deliverance was still theirs. You know what really to me when I think of that passage, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their, their confession and their stand was so bold and so certain, so assured that it made the queen, the king question yes. the ability of his furnace. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I mean, it made the king question. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. They were awfully certain. Maybe I better do something different. Yes. <laughs> Whenever the devil starts increasing, it's because he's questioning. Yes. Yes. Don't you question God, yes. but the devil is questioning his ability. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Listen, your authority is greater than anything the devil tries to work. Amen. And so whenever that minister said when they were teaching that healing class, that's what would happen when they would teach people to take their stand, use their authority on the word, exercise their faith, that the symptoms would get worse in the people. Why? The devil's trying to dupe them, yes. trying to sway them off the truth they just heard. Amen. Why? What's the word say that when the word is sown, the devil comes immediately to steal that word? Yes. Amen. Why? He's a thief. Mm -hmm. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's got to steal that word out of you so that he can kill and destroy. Yes. He can't kill and destroy when the word's in you, when he can't steal the word out of you. And that's what happens is circumstances come, feelings come, uh, Things are heightened in the negative direction. Yes. Well, you just, that, don't you question God. Don't question the word. Don't question your authority. Question the circumstances. They're the ones that are changing. Yes. <laughs> you know, the Bible says God never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why? Because when you're right, you don't have to change. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. So when th things are changing around you, it shows you that they're not anchored on what's right. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they're changing. You anchor yourself on the word. It's unchanging. And don't let what changes around you change you. It's, it's simple, but this is what the devil seeks to confuse us about. Because he, think, he tries to get us to adapt to what's around us instead of us standing our ground. And, and demanding that everything around us come in line with the truth of the word. So what do you do? You just hold to the word. What did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do when things were seven times hotter? That furnace got seven times hotter. They just kept saying. They didn't even say something different. They didn't call a prayer meeting. They didn't start fasting. They just held to the statement that got the fire hotter. <laughs> what got the fire hotter? We're not bowing. We're not bowing to this. And that was a statement that prompted the king to heat that furnace seven times hotter. So you say, Pastor Nancy, when things seemingly get worse, do I do something more? You just keep doing the thing that made it get worse. <laughs> what made it get worse? Your statements of faith, you standing on the word, your right confession. Just keep confessing it. Now, if you need to do something additionally, the Holy Ghost, look to him. He'll, he'll lead you. He'll guide you. But what happened when the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fiery furnace, the word showed up. Yes. What was the Jesus, the Son of God, the living Word showed up. Yes. Amen. And there was no hurt that that which intended that the, the outcome was different. It intended, of course, to immediately burn, burn them up. But uh, I, I so appreciate that for those who would doubt or question the validity of the miracle, they can't say that the furnace didn't work because the Nebuchadnezzar's um, troops, his military men that threw them in the furnace got burned up just getting near it. That's right. <laughs> Amen. 
But yet Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego watched those, their guards be burned, but they didn't question that God would keep them. Right. They still didn't get burned. Listen, when the guards were burning up, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't, that should have been a sign to Nebuchadnezzar. Something's up here. There's something to what these men are saying. And he went ahead and threw them in. And he saw them up and walking in the furnace. Notice this, they didn't quit moving. Faith is a movement. Faith is always continuing to go forward. And they were moving at fire. They didn't just fall down and hunker down. The Bible says they were up and walking. And the form of the fourth was like the Son of God. <laughs> so uh, you can see the strategy of the enemy in that. When you have the right words in your mouth, he's the one that questions what he sins against you. Yes. And so he will cause things to be heightened. And that's what this minister was talking about, that people, uh, when they started taking their stand. So, because listen, if we've opened the door to the devil, now uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, Paul was writing and he said, neither give place to the devil. Notice this, the devil can't take a place in you. Amen. He can't take a place. Circumstances can come against your life, but just because they come doesn't mean they have to get in. And uh, so Paul said, neither give place to the devil. So the only way the devil can get a place in us is if we give it to him. How do we give him a place? We think wrong. We speak wrong. We don't have actions in line with the word. Uh, we turn over the enemy's thoughts in our minds. We accept them as our own. Mm -hmm. That's giving the devil a place. Amen. How to you? How does the devil get a place in your thought life? Yeah. Listening to him. Yeah. Yeah. By listening yeah. to him. Right. When he's, you can't keep the devil from talking. But when he's, when when he starts talking, you start talking, yeah. <laughs> and you start answering yeah. based on the word. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, I, uh, at times when God wants to minister to someone, I can sense a healing anointing that comes into my hand. Yeah. Well, just a moment ago that flashed into my hand. So I want to take the time right now and I want to allow him to minister power to you. So I speak to those that have been harassed in your mind, those with, uh, that you felt like your mind isn't your mind anymore. I want you to know God has authored a sound mind and it still belongs to you. No matter if you opened the door to the devil, you can close the door to the devil. You might have taken the, de the enemy's thoughts that he suggested. You might have taken thoughts of fear, thoughts of worry, thoughts of doubt, thoughts that have brought depression and oppression. But just as you took them, you can get rid of them. Amen. How do you get rid of them? You say, I refuse that thought. That's not my thought. That's not my thought. Satan, that's your thought. I'm not taking that thought anymore. And then you speak what the word says. Amen. You answer those thoughts with the word of God. And so I speak to those who you've been on medication for years. Listen, as I said, you follow God on what to do about that. But today, use your faith. Amen. Tomorrow, use your faith. Amen. The day after tomorrow, use your faith. Amen. Keep using Amen. your faith. Amen. And I say to those who are addicted to medication, I speak for that addiction to be broken in Jesus' yeah. name. Every bit of that addiction, you take your hand off of them in Jesus' name. And you walk free in the name of Jesus from that addiction that has held you in that place. Because victory belongs to you. And it doesn't matter how long you've struggled with something. Your victory doesn't become less yours. Yes. You know, the woman with the issue of blood spoken of in Mark chapter 5. It says that for 12 years she suffered. And notice this, it said that she suffered many things and many physicians. The physicians weren't the enemy. They were trying to help her. Uh, physicians, it's not, they're not the bad guys. She was going to them for help, but their help wasn't the help she needed. That's all it means. Sometimes you get beyond 
the help of men. <laughs> and even if you're not beyond the help of men, the help of God's still available to you. <laughs> you don't have to wait until men can't help you. Look to God as your help every day. But here she had looked to the help of men and they tried to help her, but it only brought more suffering. It didn't bring help. And I so appreciate this woman with the issue of blood. Because she had a flow of blood under Jewish law, she's not supposed to be out in public. It's against the Jewish law to have a flow of blood and be out in public because they don't want contagious type situations uh, working. And so it was against the law for her to be out, but she so decided, I don't care that I've been this way for 12 years. I don't want to keep being this way. Amen. And she got up and she got out of the house and she went to the place where help was. Yes. What was help? Jesus was out among the people. She found him. Yes. Find the place where help is. Yes. Programs like this bring help. Yes. The word that's preached, the message like yes. this brings help. Just because it has been maybe the, a, a certain way a long time, it doesn't have to keep being that way. Amen. I tell you, I don't care how many years. And just, you say, well, Pastor Nancy, I've missed it so many times. So what? That qualifies you for a savior. Amen. And you got one. <laughs> and the devil will try to push you down and because you missed it, he'll, he'll try to push you under like you have to suffer a measure of defeat because you've missed it. Listen, you have a savior that redeemed you from defeat. And so I tell you, you can walk free. You can be free. And I believe for you to be free. Amen. And you say, well, how do I cooperate with that, Pastor Nancy? While you don't feel normal yet, while you mm -hmm. feel wrong things or hear wrong things, start saying, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free now. I'm free right now. I'm free right now. That's what faith does. It doesn't talk about what it has. It talks about uh, where it's headed. You don't talk about the symptoms or the, the difficulty you're in. Faith doesn't talk about the problem. Faith talks about the answer. So call yourself free right now. Listen, we're going to do some more teaching. We're teaching out of the book, A Sound Disciplined Mind. We want you to get hold of your copy. You can contact us at DufresneMinistries.org. Get it into your hands, feed on it. It will change your life. And I want to remind you, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. God offers you his thoughts. Take them. This life-changing book by Nancy Dufresne, A Sound Disciplined Mind, will instruct you on how to do that. God's Word will reach into your everyday life, transforming it. It will lift you from the commonplace into the supernatural. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.